say that the stakes were high then, and I thought we didn't win the game, but I thought we approached it the right way. And there's not a reason for me to think that we're going to take a step back in that regard. I'm not telling you we're going to go undefeated, but I feel like this team now has become a team that we can count on. That's how I feel about it. Um, you mentioned how this team is really close to the other ones from the past. Um, how do you think the local guys have really played together in their own office and how there's you know, a technical continuity? I, I, think it was, I think it's been good. But uh, for whatever reason, this group, whether they're from uh, Alaska or San Diego, they just kind of all fit together. Local or not, I think they all fit together. Has there been, I mean, a, a low point for them attitude-wise or a time when, when you felt like, okay, like now we're really going to see how these guys are going to respond, or has that just not been an issue at all? Maybe uh, after the Bahamas when we had lost two in a row. Responded the next game. I think we played Charlotte, the final game there. But guys were down after we lost two in a row. Guys were really down. And we had to make a quick turnaround and play the next day. But I thought our guys responded well. And there hasn't been, throughout the course of the year, you know, there are highs and lows. And you have to console guys, and keep guys going, keep guys rallied up, rally guys up. But this group has been special that way. We haven't been down for very long. What did you see after those two losses in the Bahamas that made you think that or that maybe you haven't seen since? Well, it's like we told our team in the beginning. When you first start practicing, everybody's going to conquer the world. And, man, we're a great team, rah-rah team. But then when you don't get as many shots as you thought you were going to get, you don't get as much playing time as you thought you were going to get. On top of that, you lose a game or two and you thought you could have helped the team. That's when teams can start to possibly uh, uh, lose that chemistry a little bit. But we didn't see that. We didn't see that for us. How much of Saturday's, uh, how much of, of Noah, I mean, in terms of his injuries and, and Bamie being banged up, how, how, how much was that affected in terms of his play on Saturday? I thought it played a huge part. Uh, I, I was, I heard some comments that uh, Sean Miller made about Alonzo Trier. And even though he didn't score a lot, his presence matter made a difference in the game. With, uh, with Noah, you talk about the physicality. He may be our most physical postman. Probably is out of the guys that are playing. And not only that, I think he scored double digits against Arizona the first time. So to not have him in there uh, took away a little bit from the, the team that we could beat. But you got to find a way. But from what you've seen so far in the last couple of days, is he is he bouncing back the way you'd like to see? Uh, just playing Saturday, we haven't been together, so we won't see him until uh, in an hour when we practice. I can tell you a little more after that. You think his the the foot is is bothering him at all in terms of being able to move his feet? And I mean, maybe he reaches out and grabs a guy playing the shot clock instead of moving with him. Or, or anything like that, or is, is he is he mostly past that? I don't know if that's the case. I don't. I don't know if that was the case. It's just a bad day at the office in terms of being able to stay on the floor. How, how are the freshmen in general dealing with the cumulative effects of going through a, a Pac-12 schedule? How, how are they? How are they working through it? So far, so good. You know, if the practices were still two and a half hours like earlier in the year, it might be a little more difficult. But as you move on, you want fresh legs and practice times have been cut down considerably. So we try to not only keep their legs fresh, but their minds fresh also. And their minds seem to be pretty fresh. There's been a lot made of the amount of fouls that have been called against you guys this year. Is there, I guess, a benefit to that in terms of some guys getting maybe more experience, more playing time than maybe first games? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if uh, if that benefit outweighs if the guys were really in there. <laughs> I don't. There's no question. You know, we miss no. And then all the games that Marquise has fouled, we are a different team with Marquise Chris in the game. There's no question about it. He he 
he rebounds, he scores, he can stretch the defense, he, uh, he can guard five players, all five players on the floor. He's very unique in that regard. He blocks shots, he protects the rim, but he's been in foul trouble. And the benefit maybe of somebody playing extra minutes, I don't think outweighs having Marquise Chris in the game. Is it hard to create any general thoughts or ideas when you look at two games like you guys just played and your the, the fouls that you guys had were consistent, 22-24 or 24-22, yet Arizona State has 34 fouls or 36 fouls, whatever it was, and then Arizona only has 20. Is there, I mean, as an opposing coach, can is that indicative of a lack of consistency with, with how the games are being called, or is it simply an apples and oranges from style to style? Maybe the latter. They just deliberately foul more, so I don't. Uh, I don't know if we can make that case. Would you feel pretty strongly about the advantage, no advantage, in terms of wanting to bring that back? I'm, I'm sorry. In terms of just the the fouling, in terms of they're calling those touch fouls to try to stop the guys from doing it, so they can create more flow right. in the game, right? But so they took kind of the advantage more, on more it. flow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't seem obviously that it's panned out quite that way. Maybe it just takes time and it bodies. It just takes a little time to kick in, I guess. But uh, I don't know if we have a direct flow because there are a lot of fouls being called. In general, just the games you've seen in the Pac-12, have you kind of seen a, a similar trend? Yeah, pretty similar. Yeah, pretty similar. Um, the officials are doing what they're asked to do. Yeah, the, like I said, this is not a criticism on yeah. the officials. I'm just saying, yeah. in terms of the change no, I, and the emphasis I, I, of the no, rules. I, I think uh, low, but sometimes the check of the monitor, I wish there was a way to be able to check it quicker. 